we're going to solve absolute value equations today. An absolute value equation contains an absolute value expression. So I gave you three examples. You could have just a variable inside, the absolute value of x is equal to 5. You can have an expression within those absolute value bars, such as the absolute value of p minus 2 is equal to 15. And you can also have lots of operations going on outside of those absolute value bars. So we would read the next equation, 4 times the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3 is equal to 10. Solving an absolute value equation, the first thing you have to realize is in order to solve, we have to isolate those absolute value bars. Once we have those absolute value bars, it would look like this. The absolute value of ax plus b is equal to c. And remember, we talked about absolute value. If I needed, uh, if I wanted a synonym for absolute value, I would be thinking about distance. And distance is always positive. So C has to be greater than or equal to zero. To solve this equation, I've noticed in my absolute value that this expression inside can be a positive number or a negative number. And so I would break this down into two related equations. I would take the expression inside of the absolute values and write ax plus b is equal to c or ax plus b is equal to negative c. All right, example one. We're gonna solve and graph the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 5. So we've got our original absolute value equation, and we're going to create two new equations without the absolute value bars. So think about what absolute value is. What's inside there, that expression, can equal 5, because the absolute value of 5 is 5, or the expression inside of those absolute value bars could equal negative 5 because the absolute value of negative 5 is equal to 5. So we are going to create two related equations without those absolute value bars. x minus 2 is equal to 5, or x minus 2 is equal to negative 5. We are now going to solve each of those equations. And when we do, we're going to use, in Simi Valley, all students do math. So we're actually just worried about the all students do math. There's nothing to simplify. So what am I going to do? Let's do one at a time. I'm going to add 2 to both sides because, remember, I'm trying to isolate my variable, bring down my x, a negative 2 and a positive 2 is, positive two is 0. x is equal to 7. Or, I'm going to add 2 to both sides, same line, same time, and I have x is equal to negative 3. So my solutions are x is equal to 7 or x is equal to negative 3. I can leave it like that, or there's something called a solution set and we write it with brackets, and I can put the negative 3 and the 7 with a comma inside brackets, not parentheses, brackets, and that would be a solution set. Now it says to graph, so we are going to graph on a number line. Um, just so you can see this a little bit better, I'm going to go by 1s. I was going to go by 2s, but I want you to be able to see what this does. So I have negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Whoops, that's wrong. I don't know why I did that. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because it is equal to those numbers, I am going to put in a dot on 7 and a dot on negative 
three. And we're going to do something to this graph just so just so we can play around with this and and get your mind thinking a little bit. Let's find how far apart uh, negative three and seven are from each other. And can we find the midpoint? So if I were to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 units apart. So the midpoint would be five units. So let's see. So one, two, three, four, five would land right here. And one, two, three, four, five. Now my number line is not very accurate. My, I'm not spaced exactly. But two is my midpoint. Do you see the number two anywhere in that equation? I do. Now, how far, in other words, distance, how far is negative three from two? And how far is seven from two? They're both five units. So the distance is five units apart. Remember we said absolute value was equal to distance is five somewhere in that equation. I can see the five and I can see the two. And that's very important that you can see where they are in the equation because we're gonna need to use that information in a minute. Okay, so example B, the absolute value of two X minus one equals negative four. Oh, wait a minute, on the left I have absolute value bars equals and then on the right, I have a negative number. Can absolute value equal a negative number? We just got through saying that absolute value is distance. Distance cannot be negative. Remember that C has to be greater than or equal to zero. So the answer is no, it can't be equal to a negative number. So as long as my absolute values, uh, absolute bars are isolated, and on the other side of the equation, I have a negative sign. There is no solution to this problem. How about the absolute value of x is equal to 7? This is example C. Well, in example C, the only thing inside my absolute value bars is an x. And remember that x is going to equal positive 7 or that x is going to equal negative 7. And we do a sh little shortcut. We can write the solution set if you want. You can write negative 7 and 7. Or the shortcut is x is equal to plus and minus 7. That's kind of a miserable negative 7 there. So let's fix that. So negative seven, seven, or we usually write it as plus or minus seven. Example two, solve and graph. Two times the quantity of three X plus nine minus 10 equals negative two. So the first thing is you have to understand that we must isolate those absolute value bars. So we're going to use in Simi Valley, all students do math, and there's nothing the simplification of this is going to be the all students do math. So we are going to add 10 to both sides. Let's draw our line. Same time, same line. Bring down. So we have 2 times the absolute value of 3x plus 9. Negative 10 and positive 10 is 0 equals negative 2 and 10 is 8. Now we're going to um, divide both sides by the 2. Divide by 2 on the left side, divide by 2 on the right side. So we have the absolute value of 3x plus 9 is equal to 4. We have isolated the absolute value bars. So now we are going to write the two related equations. We're going to have 
3x, whoops, sorry about that, 3x plus 9 is equal to 4, or 3x plus 9 is equal to negative 4. So we learned how to do a two-step equation, how to transform a two-step equation. We're going to use our NCME Valley. All students do math. We're going to undo the adding of 9 by subtracting 9, both sides, and bring down that 3x, positive 9, negative 9 is 0, is equal to positive 4, negative 9 is a negative 5, and divide by 3 on both sides. So x is equal to negative 5 thirds, or we're going to subtract 9 from both sides. Bring down that 3x, positive 9 and negative 9 is 0, a negative 4 and a negative 9 is negative 13. Divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to negative 13 thirds. So my solution set is negative 13 thirds or negative 5 thirds, and now we are going to graph. Now we're going to graph, so negative 5 thirds is negative 1 and 2 thirds, so it's in between negative 1 and negative 2. Negative 13 thirds is negative 4 and 1 third, and so it's in between negative 4 and negative 5, and we are done. So we're going to learn how to write an absolute value equations from a word problem rather than solve it. We already know the solutions. We have a homework assignment. The minimum length the essay is two pages. The maximum length is six pages. And we're going to write the equation that has the minimum and maximum lengths as its solution. First thing we're going to do is we're going to graph those points. So we have two pages and we have six pages and we want to find the midpoint. We can count on the graph or we can solve it using arithmetic. So 2 plus 6 divided by 2 is 8 over 2. So my midpoint is going to be 4. That is my midpoint. Now the second step is that I want to find the distance. To find the distance I can count on my graph 1, 2, so this is 2 units. 1, 2, this is 2 units, so my distance is going to be 2. My midpoint is 4, my distance is 2. The other way to find the distance is to take my solutions and subtract the midpoint. The absolute value of 2 minus 4 is 2. The absolute value of 6 minus 4 is 2. So my distance is 2. Our midpoint is 4 and our distance is 2. So we're going to play a little game of Jeopardy here. We're given the solutions which are 2 and 6. We found the midpoint and we found the distance. Remember absolute value is equal to distance. So the distance is 2. And then our equation is going to be our solutions, which are x minus the midpoint, which is 4. Just like example 1a, when I said to you, let's look at the graph and compare it with the equation. Now we took the solutions and we wrote the equation just knowing the solutions. And that's absolute value equations. Remember to make two related equations without your absolute value bars.